Every morning, day after day during the dry season, Tlok Lowen goes with her son to collect what the night left in her net in the flooded forest. Years ago, I remember I used to cry for the weight of the fish I had to bring home. Now every year is worse. And in my net in the morning, I find always very little fish. Like all the people living around her in this small floating village of Ralom Trum on the Tonle Sap Lake, she struggles every day to get just enough fish to feed herself and her family, waiting for the rainy season to come. When the heavy rainfall start, the Mekong River swells and fills up the lake, flooding the surrounding plains. That's the time the people of Tlok's flooded village go back home to their permanent village. As soon as they arrive, they start preparing their fields to plant a variety of rice that can grow as the waters rise up to four meters high. With the mounting waters, a huge variety of aquatic organisms also move to the floodplain into the rice fields and irrigation canals. Fish, crustaceans, amphibians, a part of the biodiversity living in this rice-based ecosystem. Of these, more than 100 different species caught and collected by rural people are an important source of food. People like Tlok fish and collect the animals that live in their rice fields, eat them, process them and sell them in the markets. perfect blend of elements based on traditional knowledge which people around the lake have used for generations. Hundreds of different species of fish, birds, plants and insects, each contributing to the reciprocal benefit of all. Once people knew how to make the best of them, fishing, farming, hunting and building their homes. But always being careful that this world would also be able to feed and shelter their children and the generations to come. But over the last years, a fast-growing population adapting to a changing economy is modifying its behavior towards the environment. Uncontrolled deforestation to clear more land for cultivation and the construction of dams upstream are making the rise and fall of the water too rapid, drowning or drying out the deep water rice. This and the excessive exploitation of the lake's resources, also through illegal fishing, has led to a decline of catches around the lake. The responsibility lies both with the commercial fishing companies and the poor fisher folk. The first make the highest profit ahead of an uncertain future. The second in a desperate need to catch enough to survive. If you don't use electroshock, you just don't catch enough fish. If they catch you fishing using electroshock, they make you pay 400,000 reals. If you don't have them, they'll put you in jail. I always tell my son not to use electroshock. I don't have the money to pay, and he would end up in jail. This damage to the environment has consequences above all for the poorest of the rural population, the landless ones who rely exclusively on the available aquatic resources once so cheap and abundant in the rice fields and surrounding irrigation canals. A solution has to be found before it's too late, 
and the situation of people living in villages like Ralom Trum worsens. Loch Lowen and her fellow farmers and fisher folk could be helped by legislation protecting the lake from overfishing and an unbalanced use of the aquatic resources. Plans to raise awareness could lead communities to a stronger control on how their own members behave. Training in integrated pest management and diversified production as part of farmer field schools would enable the communities to base their food security on different sources. The villagers would learn how to combine a traditional world with modern needs and to assess the impact of their new practices on the ecosystem they rely on. Then they could control, as they always did, the dynamics of the environment in which they play such a fundamental role.